Okay, in this section we've um, so far uh, looked at a um, couple, uh, three vectors in the first video, right? And that had um, that was just looking at some basic vector operations, right? Uh, and then in the second video we looked at two vectors and we looked how to use those dot products that we did in the first video and turn them into um, turn them into relationships between those two vectors. And finally, this time, um, I want to take one vector and I want to use the dot product to find um, several things, right? We can find the magnitude of the vector. We've already talked about that, right? Um, on top of that, we can find these di direction cosines. And the direction cosines um, show up all the time. Um, they're not most. They're not the uh, most common way to characterize the angle of something because you have um, three of them, and really in three three dimensions you have a magnitude and two angles that completely define space. But they are used in um, several different places, so it's so it's useful to understand what they are, um, and the angles associated with them. The direction angles, I guess, is what your book calls them. Um, Those are alpha, beta, and gamma, right? Um, and this is cosine alpha, cosine beta, cosine gamma. And then finally, I'll go ahead and find the um, regular spherical coordinates. So um, we already have the magnitude here, and I'll find that um, theta and phi that you're used to finding before. Uh, but I just want to keep on going through and do some stuff with um, dot products and all that other fun stuff uh, so that you understand what's going on. Um, you know, I mean, hopefully that will help you, um, you know, organize all of this uh, angle stuff in your brain when you need to use it later on. Okay, and so let's draw this out and um, sort of get an idea, X, Y, Z, of what these angles are that I'm talking about. All right. Um, first of all, I guess we have to figure out where exactly P is. P is 1, 2 in the x direction. And then it's 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y direction. So that's its projection in the xy plane. Right? And you already know how to find the projection in the xy plane. Because um, you did that without having to do any of this more advanced math. And then we're going to find, um, we're going to go up four, right? The z, the z component. So one, two, three, four. These are pretty large steps. And then this guy here, that is p. That's where p is. It's the point p. Um, so these angles that we have are from the axis to the vector. So from the x-axis to this vector p, that's alpha. From the y-axis to the vector p, right, that's got a projection in there, that's beta. And then from the z-axis to the vector p, that's gamma. All right. Um, so that's looking pretty good so far. I, I don't see any um, reasons why you'd be upset about that. Uh, it turns out that this angle from z to p, that's also theta. So this spherical angle theta and this angle gamma, they're the same angle. I would have chosen a different, um, I would have chosen a different order for for some of this stuff, but that's what we get. Then, then what we have is the angle from the x-axis to the projection of p in the x-y plane. That's going to be phi. So this is phi here. Right, alpha is alpha is from the x-axis to the um, to the to the direction of the air of the of the vector. So it has the same um, this alpha has the same definition as theta and gamma. Right, alpha, beta, gamma all have the same definition, and it's basically the same definition as that polar angle theta. It's um, it's this angle here, phi, that guy has the sl slightly different definition. 
Okay. Um, and that that's the punchline. Th that's um, what you really should bring out of this, and will um, keep you from lying awake at night in graduate school. All right. So, hey, let's find um, the magnitude of p. We can call that like that. Uh, we've done this over and over and over again. It's the um, first component squared, four meters squared, plus the second component squared, that's 16 meters squared, plus the third component squared, that's 16 meters or squared. So that ends up being um, 16 plus four is 20, plus 16 is 36 square meters. So take the square root of that, you have six meters. That's, that's our magnitude. Simple, to the point, something that you do all the time, um, something that we started this um, chapter off with, and something you're going to keep on getting to use over and over again during the course of the semester. Um, B, direction cosines. Okay, so the um, definition for these direction cosines is basically the cosine of alpha, for example, is the x component of um, P, so that's Px, over its magnitude p, okay? So that's two meters over six meters, which is equal to one third. Thought it would be something more complicated than that. It's not, it's just, that's all it is. And cosine beta, like I said, um, it's all the same thing, py over p, right? Which is um, four meters over six meters, which is equal to two-thirds. And amazingly, cosine gamma is four meters. It's still P, oh, let me, how much room do I have? Plenty of room, okay. P, Z over P, four meters over six meters equals two-thirds. Look at that. Nice, simple, to the point. Uh, nothing um, particularly complicated. And, to find these actual angles, all we have to really do is um, take the um, arc cosine, the inverse cosine, right? So arc cosine of one third is, according to my calculator, uh, 50.52 degrees. That's plenty of precision for me. Uh, beta is equal to the arc cosine of um, two thirds as well, Py over P. Um, and so this guy is uh, 48.19 degrees. Um, not quite so interesting, but hey, I mean, that's it's what you get. And it's probably what you should get. This is the long one, right? This, this guy is much larger than these other two. These other two have to be the same because these components are the same. So gamma is equal to the arc cosine of 23, or 2 over 3, excuse me, which is 48.19 degrees. Bang! Bang! Nothing complicated at all, just some rules to follow, and you'll get to follow them. Um, that's the whole reason why we have homework, is because just listening to me, that doesn't help you at all. Um, what really helps you is um, doing it. Okay, so... Now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing only for um, theta and phi. Like I said, theta is equal to gamma, and so you just have to do this stuff, and you're going to find out that theta is 48.2 degrees. So I just rounded that up. Um, so for this guy, we have a very similar definition, only this is a, the projection in the plane, right? So instead of um, so cosine of phi, is going to be equal to um, uh, this component, which is px, over the magnitude of the perpen of the projection of um, p, right? So that is going to be equal to um, well, two meters over the square root of four meter four square meters plus sixteen square meters. Um, x squared plus y squared, and we're ignoring the z component, right? And so that means we have two meters over the square root of 20 square meters, which is, um, that's four times five, which means we have two coming out, two cancels, so we have one over the square root of five, okay? 
And so that means that, you know, phi being equal to the um, inverse cosine of 1 over the square root of 5 uh, gives us 63.4 degrees, somewhat, somewhat smaller than that guy, which makes sense, right? And somewhat larger than this guy, which makes sense. So everything's good. We, un we understand what's going on. And uh, we're ready for the next section. I hope you enjoyed listening to this as much as I did um, mumbling into the uh, mumbling into the camera. Um, be good, and I'll see you tomorrow.